Hi, this is Randy from Fried Eggs Golf, and welcome to the first ever installment of Over Easy. You guys asked a ton of great questions, and this is actually my second time recording this video because the first one took 35 minutes. So we're going to set some guidelines. Uh, I got a timer here. I'm going to set it for 10 minutes. I'm going to answer as many questions as I can in 10 minutes, and after the timer goes off, don't worry. If I didn't get to your question, I will start next week's episode with the questions that I missed. So having said that, let's dive right into it. First question, Jose Cuervo. Have you tried the Bomb Tech Grenade Driver or XE1 Wedge or other off-brand or gimmick type clubs? No, I have not. And I will warn you to be a little cautious with gimmick clubs. If it takes an infomercial to sell a club or it seems too good to be true, it probably is. So, but that's unfair because I've not tried any of those, so they might be awesome. Michael Lim, how does a shaft of a driver affect the numbers of your launch conditions? Mark Crossfield seems to think not so much. Well, Michael, I would agree with Mark Crossfield in this situation. With my experience with fitting, typically shaft is the last thing that I'll start to tweak once I've dialed in all the adjustments of the head and found the proper head length and all that important stuff. When I start changing the shaft around, uh, we don't see drastic changes, but it does help push the numbers in the right direction to help suit that golfer's interest. So it is important. I don't want to unstress that. It is It is. Very important to fit for shaft, but it's not a drastic change in the numbers, especially launch angle. Keenan Jr., do you think Under Armour or Adidas will ever make golf clubs or golf balls? What about Ping making golf balls? Well, Adidas, uh, I don't know if you knew this, actually owns TaylorMade and Adams, so I doubt they'd want to get into the golf club market to compete with themselves. Under Armour, I don't think that they'll start from scratch. I could actually see them buying another manufacturer and starting a business up that way and then just rebranding it, renaming it Under Armour. And with golf balls and ping, once again, it would have to be a circumstance where a golf ball company went up for sale and they purchased that company because diving into the golf ball market just off the bat is uh, it's a not an easy task. And I, actually, ping used to make golf balls. I don't know if you guys remember that. They were half and half. They used to be half like purple, half yellow. But anyway, good question. Michael Carr, do you believe that playing, paying upwards of $400 for a premium aftermarket shaft, especially considering that the quality of stock shafts is greatly improving in recent years? Uh, it's tough with aftermarket shafts because, like in the other question there, you don't see that much of a difference, I think, to validate to go to the $400 end. Now, having said that, there are some great aftermarket shafts out there that you can find in that sub $100 range that will in increase your performance and push the numbers as far as your, your launch angle and spin rate into the range that you want to find them in, and you don't have to spend $400 on that. Now, with stock shafts, yeah, I would agree that a lot of them are getting better, and even some of these manufacturers now are offering aftermarket shafts as stock options, so keep that in mind. Uh, Zoric, Exorcos? Sorry, I'm horrible at that. What are the questions you feel people should ask during a fitting. I tried to question my golf pro during lessons with basic questions like what, how, why, or any other questions apart from these obvious ones. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a list of questions that you should ask a club fitter, but you should definitely ask questions. Uh, you should always be curious to why they're doing what they're doing, and don't be afraid or hesitate to ask them. And any club fitter that's worth his salt should not have a problem with you asking questions and then should actually encourage it. And my favorite thing is when someone asks me a question during a fit and I have to say I don't know because that means I have to go find out and that helps expand my knowledge and helps me become a better club fitter. So, Andrew McKenzie asks, why would TaylorMade choose not to release the M2 irons in Australia? They have all the other clubs here but not the M2 Tour. I was looking forward to testing them. I'm sorry about that because that is frustrating. A lot of the times we live where I live in the States is in the, uh, the northern part where it gets cold and we tend to get clubs after the southern states do because they play golf year round down there. So I, I understand your frustration, but don't worry because we just got them and there might be a case where they're just delayed. It might be a couple months until they go there. If not, I'm sorry, that's horrible. Chris Pendleton, Barry, oh, Chris Pendleton and Barry Edwards uh, both told me to do course vlogs. Not a question, but I agree with you. I should do course vlogs. I, I would have done more last year, but I don't feel like I have the video camera 
or the equipment to do so. So it, I'd have to invest a little bit more into my recording equipment, I feel like, to give you guys a watchable course vlog. But definitely interested in doing that. Peyton Miller asks, what's your favorite club? How big do you want your channel to get? What goals, plans have you made to improve in 2016? My favorite club is my hybrid. I hope you're asking me about my set. But favorite club in my bag is my hybrid. It's an X-Pro, uh, and it's I, the love of my life. Uh, how big do you want your channel to get? Uh, as big as it wants to, I guess. What goals do I have to improve in 2016? Uh, if you're talking about my golf game, I just I just want to practice more. I don't think that I've actually practiced golf in seven years. So I'd like to practice. Robocop and Crop D asked, Seriously, why don't you have more subscriptions? I don't know. Easy answer to that question, though, is you go to your grandparents' house and you sign them up for a YouTube account. Subscribe to me. That'll help. Terry Bergen asks, How often would you say that you should get new clubs? New clubs are always being launched that are better than previous ones, but the improvements are slight. How long should you wait before the cumulative improvements are significant enough to really improve your game and warrant buying new clubs? Mm, this is tough because technology and the way that clubs improve are different from woods and irons. I would say woods, they typically improve more rapidly because they put more R&D into drivers and fairways and stuff like that because those are quicker turnaround clubs. Uh, let's put the year, two or three years on a metal wood. Irons, ugh. you can play irons as long as the grooves stay sharp uh, in all honesty and you get the proper amount of spin. But, you know, five years, maybe start looking at new irons. That's my benchmark. Sean Winho, best aftermarket shaft for a driver or iron. I don't know the best, but I love Audela. I think they make a great aftermarket shaft, and you'll see a lot of manufacturers actually start to stock them, but they, they, they make a good aftermarket shaft, and it's not crazy expensive either. And an iron, ugh. I play Dynamic Gold, and that thing's like stocked and everything, and it's, I think it's one of the best shafts, so I don't have an answer for the iron. Uh, is a lighter shaft better? Um, not necessarily. It just depends on the golfer. depends on the tempo, club head speed, but typically... Slower club head speed will be improved by a lighter weight shaft. You get a little bit uh, more distance. Good questions. Jake Magic one two three. What balls are good for low club or low swing speed? Uh, let's go with the Wilson Duo is a great one. Callaway Super Soft, even the Callaway Chrome Soft. They're awesome golf balls for lower club head speeds, and they're starting to get urethane covers on some low compression golf balls. So check those out. Those are awesome. I like the Chrome. Uh, Mike Kiefer, what are your top five courses in Fort Wayne? Oh, why didn't I should have researched this one? Uh, let's go uh, Sycamore Hills, uh, designed by Jack Nicholas, is number one. It's one of the, the coolest courses, I think, in the state of Indiana, but coolest uh, definitely where I live. Let's go Autumn Ridge, uh, Orchard Ridge, Brookwood, and Fort Wayne Country Club. Yeah. Casper Nurpin, exotic shaft or new club head? I would go new club head because I was in the past conversations there. Exotic shafts will improve numbers, but they won't change them drastically. So if you're looking for a change, start with the club head. Connor Bennett Golf, should 12 handicappers focus on short game or long game? You should focus on finding or, or developing a manageable tee shot. Once you have a ball that you can consistently get in the fairway, chip putt, chip putt, chip putt. That's it. That's your whole life. You'll go from a 12 to a 6 if you just chip and putt, and you can hit a decent shot off the tee. Wayne Swisher, how often should we change grips? Uh, you should change grips based on their condition. Uh, if you play a lot, typically rubber grips like Golf Pride, uh, Lampkin, uh, Tour Wraps, and uh, what's the other one I'm looking for? Tour Velvet. Those will last quite a while. You just put some soapy water on them or some Windex, and they'll clean up, and you can bring the life back to them. Wind grips tend to wear out faster, so you have to change those out a little bit faster. Uh, Riza Opdikbeek. Oh, I hope I did all right on that one. Are bladed irons better to learn how to make solid contact? Oh, well, no. Uh, if you want to learn the game, learn with the most forgiving club because you don't want to frustrate yourself. The early process of learning golf can be very 
aggravating. I feel like a lot of people give it up in that first, you know, couple months because it is, it's, it's hard to develop that skill. But playing a blade is not going to automatically make you strike the ball better because you're concentrating more. Learn on a forgiving iron and then work your way down from there. That's good to know. Asked, how come Rick and Peter never review Wilson? I don't know. The, the, my guess would be is that they maybe don't have an equipment rep available to them to provide them with the equipment to test. Oh, that's the timer. But I'll finish answering that question. They probably don't have a, uh, an equipment rep to provide them with Wilson clubs to actually, you know, to, to test them out with. Because I promise you, if they had them available to them, they would definitely do a review because those guys review everything. I'll do one more question just to finish off the page here. Uh, Brother Ty asks, why are golfers so little in... <laughs> I think Brother Ty is trolling me. But he asks, why are golfers so little and weak looking? When will you see our first golfer that looks like a real athlete? <laughs> um... You're, yeah, I, you put it in a question form, so I'm going to answer it. Uh, why are golfers so little and weak looking? Well, I don't think they're all little and weak looking, but uh, um, I would say that golfers are primarily not big as in your tra traditional football, rugby, baseball players uh, because they don't need to be. Golf's more about flexibility, and it's a lot about lankiness. I feel like uh, a lot of your, your golfers... They, they try to slim down actually more than try to bulk up. The biggest you'll ever see a golfer be uh, was probably Tiger Woods in his prime. That dude was humongous when he was working out. And Rory's kind of followed that same path. And you'll see that a lot of people even criticize him for working out and getting that big. But you're talking about some of the best players in the world, so maybe they're onto something. And they hit it like a bajillion miles. So uh, thanks for all the questions. You guys are awesome. And I appreciate you guys tuning in and listening to me talk about stuff because it's, uh, it's very flattering to me uh, I, that you're even interested in what I have to say. So please ask more questions in the comment section below if you have them. Uh, if I didn't get to your questions this week, I will start them next week. I feel like this is just going to keep getting delayed and delayed because you guys have so many great questions and I don't want to leave any of them behind. So there you go. I will see you next week. Same place. I'll probably be sitting in the same chair in the same place. So I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until then, I will see you later. Mm -hmm.